Hi YouTubers, welcome to Neurology Land. Dr. Reeves here, back with another exciting adventure in neurologic stuff. Let's talk about Botox. Do I look uh, okay? My wrinkles all right? A little, little loose under here. No, not that kind of Botox. I want to talk about Botox as a medicine as opposed to as a way to try to pretend that time isn't going by. Uh, we use Botox in, in neurology quite a bit. Uh, I've injected hundreds and hundreds of people with Botox. Briefly, here's when I use Botox. I use it for people who have spasticity, and that's abnormal muscular contraction, typically of an arm or a leg. Um, you get that with uh, people who have cerebral palsy, after strokes, uh, certain kinds of injuries to the, to the brain or spinal cord, uh, multiple sclerosis, anything that can affect the motor circuits in the brain and or spinal cord can potentially result in spasticity. You may have seen people who have uh, had a stroke and they have that arm kind of curled up like this because the tone, the, the muscle tone here in, in this muscle and, and down in here and then the, the forearm and wrist are, are, are doing this, they're just kind of unopposed. And that can cause problems. So we do injections for spasticity to make the joints a little bit easier to move and stretch out or, or change shirts or wash. I do um, Botox injections for dystonia, which is what it was originally approved for long ago. Um, the, remember, the Botox medication is injected and really all it does is block certain chemical messengers from carrying their message. And that's the messenger that is used to tell a, mu a muscle to contract. So if you block that, the muscle is weakened, not permanently, because it wears off. Lasts about three months, give or take. So dystonia is when the muscles, are, they don't have spasticity, but for some reason the motor program up in the brain to do a certain movement or posture is being, that program is being implemented um, inappropriately. So a, one of the common dystonias is, is torticollis, where the muscles here in the neck may be turning the head and the person tries to turn it back and and very often they want to have a very large muscle there. And so you, you selectively weaken that muscle through injection. And uh, that's very beneficial. Spasticity of any cause. Dystonia. Uh, and both spasticity and dystonia typically you want to be using Botox when there's kind of a selected target or at least a selected region. If you have spasticity in all four extremities, uh, you, you just can't go inject Botox in every muscle and every extremity because then uh, you turn into a big sponge, uh, I guess, uh, or a, a, a limp a rag doll. And so it's just, it's just not going to work. So spasticity, dystonia. The third, um, not too rarely uh, do I use this, is for drooling. The, of course, in medicine we have a fancy $5 word for excessive drooling. It's called sialuria. Which is, means excessive drooling. And I have patients who, who maybe they have uh, cerebral palsy or Parkinson's disease or any of a number of other conditions where the drooling is, is excessive. A little bit, okay, not that big a deal. But when there's a lot of that going on, the skin here may be uh, more prone to breaking down and getting infections, the person's uncomfortable. They always have a pool of, of saliva that's kind of uh, soaking here, and um, that can be a problem. And it turns out that a small amount of Botox to the parotid gland here on each side in front of the ear knocks that down pretty well. A lot of the saliva is made in the parotid gland, some, some in the submandibular gland. Uh, here on each side. And there's some other smaller glands making uh, saliva as well. In my experience, typically if you, if you knock down saliva production substantially just from the parotid, that's usually enough to really kind of curb the problem. And it, it takes a, 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 use a tiny little uh, tuberculin type of, of syringe, uh, it's a tiny little needle, and uh, takes about five or ten minutes in the office. Lastly, after spasticity, dystonia, sialuria, and sweating, 
you know, uh, it is sweating. Uh, there's, uh, of course, we have a $5 word for that, hyperhidrosis, too much sweating. Now, here we get to, well, hyperhidrosis where? You can't inject Botox everywhere in the body. If you're sweating too much everywhere, that's a different problem. If you're sweating too much um, in your hands, that's not really going to work either to go inject in the skin uh, all up and down the hands. That's sort of a form of torture, I think. Plus, even though it blocks the, it blocks the chemical messenger that goes to sweat glands, and so they don't sweat, but some will probably get into a little bit of the muscles too and you get weak hands. So that wouldn't be it. That wouldn't be a good thing. Uh, hyperhidrosis or too much sweating in the underarms, now that's a pretty easily treated. And I have some patients who just, for some reason, the nerves that, that go to the sweat glands and the underarms are just Olympic caliber. And uh, sometimes it runs in families. A lot of times it just sort of seems to happen to somebody for who knows what reason. And every three months you come in and we do this uh, little, quick little set of injections in there and knocks the sweating down pretty well. So spasticity, dystonia, sialuria or drooling, uh, uh, sweating, uh, focal sweating. These are the four main reasons I use Botox. I, I, I don't do much headache Botox anymore. Uh, partly I have not been astounded by success compared to using it for these other things. And partly, I just don't have the time. Uh, now, I don't do Botox for wrinkles. You're on your own. I'm sure there's a cream somewhere that someone would be delighted to sell you for $39.95 or, or more that might help. I don't know. But Botox for spasticity, dystonia, sialuria, sweating, good thing. Doesn't work 100% of the time particularly for spasticity and dystonia, and spasticity in, in, in particular because that can sometimes involve large numbers of muscles. But depending on where it is uh, in the body, sometimes it's pretty helpful. These are worth uh, thinking about in selected cases. And one of the nice things about it is if you injected, let's say you got in the wrong muscle, or you injected too much, well, it's going to wear off in three months. One of the bad things about it is if it works, it's going to wear off in three months. So you got to come in and get it re-injected anyway. I hope that was helpful. Bye.